What's going on everybody, it's Dermot and welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to introduce you to scene understanding, which is going to allow you to build richer and more complex experiences when it comes to using pass-through and also anchor technology. Let's say that I wanted to know in this room where the walls are, and basically see that in pass-through. I could do that by going through a process called scene capture, which allows me to classify each object in my surrounding. I can do that with walls, I can do it with a door, with a window, with the tables that I have behind me. And that is very helpful because they say that I wanted to have colliders on them and have things that bounce on them, or maybe I want to put a character in some of those different objects. Then I can do that by using scene understanding. So I'm gonna be walking you through a couple of different steps, basically some project settings. I'm also gonna show you a demo that I built. So stay tuned and make sure that you watch the end of the video to look at the complete demo that I think you're going to enjoy. So jump into my computer and I start working on it. Meta OS and Oculus integration version 40 or greater are going to be required. You also need to enable the OpenXR backend and you can do that by going through Oculus Tools, OVR Utilities plugin, and then set OVR plugin to OpenXR. Then you also need to enable pass through and anchor support. The color space is going to be linear, scripting back in, it's going to be IL2 CPP and make sure that you have it set to be 64 bit because that's what the Quest Store will require. Then this is a screenshot of some of the settings that I have on my OVR camera rig. You're going to need the anchor support is going to be enabled. It basically goes back to this option in here and then pass through support. You also need to get it and set it to support it and then enable pass through has to be checked. So. If you're running on a PC and you want to run things through Oculus Link, just make sure that you go through the setup of the room setup prior to launching Unity. Otherwise, Unity is going to give you an ugly message. And I'm going to show you what that ugly message is. Basically, the OVR scene manager, which is included in the Oculus integration, is going to be executing these two actions. So if the scene model was loaded successfully, this method will execute. If it was not loaded successfully because there's no room that you haven't basically set up, is going to run through this method. So in the case of the no scene model to load, if that gets executed, if you're running in Unity, it's going to show you here, it's going to say scene capture does not work over link. And that's because you can't really do it over link. You have to do it on the operating system and then have a room available so that Unity can load it. Otherwise, if you're running on the device, then it's going to say, okay, have I done a scene capture before? If I have, then there's really no further action that will be taken. Otherwise, it's basically going to call into this OVR scene manager, request scene capture. It is going to run you through the scene capture of your room. So in the case that you want to launch that, you can basically interact with that by using the OVR scene manager. You're going to be dragging this OVR camera rig, which you can search for. And then once you have that, that's basically going to have the, the camera that we're going to need. So if we go in here, you're going to see that there is going to be a camera right there. It can also make these gizmos a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. But that's going to basically be our camera. The next thing that you need to do is I'm going to go into my right and left anchor. And if you look for the controller prefab, we can also drag one of those inside the anchor. So I'm going to do one there and also one on this other anchor. And then make sure that you designate which controller this is going to be. It's going to be the left controller for that one. And then the right controller is going to be for this one. And I'm also going to be saving this scene. So we can call this one scene understanding. Go ahead and save it on their scenes. So now that you have that, you should be able to start capturing you know, your controller and, and be able to capture input and so on. So the other thing that I need to do though is right now I don't have any way to basically capturing like with a laser what things I'm colliding with because we're going to be pointing to the walls and I want to toggle the collider in some of those and also the mesh render. So I already have one component that is going to allow you to do that. So I'm going to drag it and drop it. You can drag it and drop it to the left one if you wanted to. I'm just going to put it under the right controller because that's the hand that I use. I'm right-handed, but you can do it on both if you wanted to, if you wanted to have two rays. And then once you do that, you're going to see that it gives you this custom laser pointer, which we're going to be adding some functionality to it. I just didn't want to build the core functionality in this video because I think it's beyond what you need to know. So this one is going to have an anchor and the anchor is going to be basically this controller anchor. 
display text, we also need to add another component here, which is basically a very simple UI, which is going to tell us if we're colliding with a wall, if we're colliding with a door, basically with the screens, display here, it's going to give us that information. We can make this a little bit smaller. Then if you go in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop these labels so that it knows what label it needs to set the information to. And then I just have different options in here for the mesh render toggle, we're going to use in the button A for objects to toggle action. Basically the whole object is going to disappear. It's going to be B and then to restore basically everything as I had it originally, we're going to be using the button Y on the controller. So I think I have everything in here that I need. The next thing that I'm gonna need though as well is going to be, okay, that's great Dilmer, but how do we get the actual model? So let me show you how to do that. So we're gonna go here and search for scene and then there's going to be an OVR scene manager. So if you drag it and drop it, you're gonna see that it comes up with all of these, but it doesn't really have much information other than this OVR scene model loader is going to be the one responsible for loading the model. This one right here is going to be the one responsible for setting up your scene. So the reason why we have a plane prefab is because in the instances of your wall, the wall is a plane, but if you have something that is a volume, for instance, a screen that it's a 3D box, in that case, it's going to be using a volume prefab. So it just really depends if you have basically a volume versus a plane. And then if we go here under Oculus and we go under sample framework, there's going to be another folder here for scene manager. And if you go under prefabs, you're gonna see that we have a, a, spammable, a, a spammable plane, I think that's how you say it. And then also one for volume. I'm gonna go ahead and clone those two. And then we're gonna be adding those to our own prefabs folder. So let's go ahead and drag them and drop them there. Once you do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop these and then drag and drop these. The one that Oculus has, it's missing like screens, it's missing the actual plan. So what I ended up doing, if you go to one of these ones right here, let's say that we do the volume, it's going to have these different spannable prefabs and you can go to each one of these prefabs and you're gonna see that this is gonna be the box that is going to do for the floor. If you wanted to look at a couch and you wanted to place a couch, if you wanna do a wall, if you wanna do a window, basically it has these components with the resizable, simple resizable, which takes care of resizing everything by looking at the vertices of this mesh and resizing things correctly. So that's already been done for you, but there's some other things that I wanted to add, such as the other components, such as actually adding a screen because I have multiple screens in here. Also adding windows, I think the original one, if I'm not mistaken, let me, let me look at it one more time. The original one is missing actually the lamp and also missing the screen. I think most of other objects are already set up, but if you need to add one of these, all you have to do is just click on the plus symbol and the generic prefab is going to be added. So that's everything that you need to do there as far as that. There is going to be another thing that I need to add and I call it the OVR scene managers add-on. Let me just explain to you what that is before we, we keep going further. So basically this is gonna be hooking into the OVR scene manager and the reason for that is because I need a callback to be executed as soon as the model is loaded successfully. When it's loaded successfully, I'm going to run through this method. And this method, the main responsibility is to basically add box collider. So I just say, give me all the different objects that have this type and then go through in uh, box colliders. Obviously, if your environment is more complex and you don't want any mesh render that is in the scene to have a collider, just make sure that you change this code. And then this OVR semantic classification array, the reason why I did this is because for some reason, the default implementation when the desk get all assigned, everything is upside down. So I ended up just applying a fix here, which basically multiplies the C axis times negative one on the local scale. And that just make him look the right way. Basically they are position and pointing in the right direction. So just make sure that you add this. I'm going to be looking into why this is an issue. Maybe, maybe report it to Meta just to make sure that they know that that is an issue. So the next thing that I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna add this ball spawner manager. It's gonna allow us to basically spawn balls against the objects that are getting at it. I think I'm just gonna do the walls for now. And it's going to allow us to basically turn on the mesh render and then turn it off. Basically we're gonna be doing a toggle. And I'll also do the same thing with the colliders. And you can set the force here, the offset, 
And also the ball that I'm gonna be using is the one that the actual Oculus integration already has. So if we go down in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and assign this tracking space, which is required. And then the controller transform that I'm going to be using. So I'm just gonna make sure that that is also set. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it. Actually, I need to set it to the right hand anchor and just make sure you set it because that's the one that is going to get the rotation and also the right position. So once you have those, I think the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple of changes that we need to do on the custom laser pointer so that you can get some of those classifications into your code. So if you want to get the classifications of an object, we can say semantic classification and that we can access and set this variable. Then the object here is going to have that information on the parent, so we can say get component in parent, and then just make sure that we access that same object. Then we're gonna be doing and making sure that this object does have a cl classification, so it's gonna say that. And then also make sure that it has labels, so it's gonna do a nullable check in here and make sure that it is greater than zero, that way if it's a wall, if it's a door, then this count should be greater than zero and then classification won't be no. And then we can get that information put into an actual UI. So now that we have that, we have this display text, which is basically the component on the very top. And then we can get this classifier by just saying labels. And then we can just get that value by accessing that index. And then if for whatever reason, this object doesn't have a classification, we can just set this to be empty, just in case if we're, if we're going through and selecting an object that has one and one that doesn't have one. So we can just do a string that empty. The next part that I want to do is also implement a toggle. So I want to be able to toggle different game objects and also the render. So this is gonna take care of the actual semantic displaying that on the little box, on the little play that we added. So we can just say OVR semantic classification displaying here. Now to toggle it, we're gonna have to do something with import, right? So let me go ahead and remove this to do. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna also say, okay, if classification is not equal to null, then I can, and I wanna make sure that it's also a wall because I don't wanna allow all, all, all objects to go through this. So I can say if for some reason my thumb keeps hitting the wrong button, but you can do it like this. You can say OVR scene and then manager, and this has an actual classification, and I'm only going to be allowing that on walls. So you can also do that on all the other objects if you like to, but for now, we'll just do it just for the walls. Then the next thing that I'm gonna do though is I need to capture the input just to make sure that we know what bond we're gonna be using for a toggle. So I'm just gonna say get down here, and then this one is going to be the object toggle action. So that's going to allow us to toggle the object. And I can also do an else if with the same code that we have in here. And then I'll just use the, the basically the other options. So the other action is going to be mesh render toggle action. And then I'll just do my, basically my implementation. So in the if statement, I'm just going to say, okay, I know which object I need to basically set the activation to false. So I can just say object hit and then set active. And then we can just set it to false. And then I also have an array here, basically a list that is going to say, it's gonna keep track of all the objects that we have. That way we don't keep adding those objects over and over and over. And then if we wanna restore their state, we can also restore the state. So if you call into this app process objects, it's going to check if that object is not already in the array or in the list. And if it's not, I'm just going to be adding it. So it's gonna say add process object, and then we can just pass in the object that we want to add has been processed. And then I can also do the same thing here, except that we're just going to get a different component. So I'm just gonna say object hit, and then get component. And the component that I'm gonna get is going to be this one. And all I'm gonna do in this case is just gonna set the mesh render to false, and then we're gonna add the object as well to our list. So this is gonna allow us to basically toggle that back and forth. And then the last part that I wanna do though, is I wanna be able to restore everything back to how it was, so we can also add another action in here. So I'm just gonna say OVR input, and then in this case, gonna be get down, and then I have another action that I have on the very top. And then I'm also going to make sure, let me just do NN, that I have different objects in my list. So you can do that by using basically count 
greater than zero. And if the count is greater than zero, then I know that I can restore all the different objects. So I can just say var and then process object and then in process objects. And then basically we can just redo, undo what we did in here. I'm just gonna say, I want to set this object, in this case, this one. I'm gonna set this to be true. And I also want to make sure that I set the visibility back to true. So basically we're just undoing everything that we did right above it. And then at the end of this, we can say process objects are clear because we're basically restoring everything to, to be back to default. So basically this one is just gonna display the information. This one is going to allow us to toggle different components. And then this one is going to allow us to restore some of that information. All right guys, so this is now running on my device. You can see a screen here, a screen, a wall, and then my desk. I can also see the plant. Desk on the other side, also ceiling, and then basically we're getting all the different objects. I can also toggle the different walls, so if I wanted to toggle that, and then shoot the balls, I can do that. I can also toggle that one, toggle that one on the other side, and then I can basically just do the collisions with the objects that I have around. So. This is working great. You can also see the monitors are aligning perfectly. You can see that everything is going to get loaded and my head is getting tracked. Also the controller. We'll go ahead and get closer here to, to the controller so you guys can see how I can start testing this in real time without having to have these deploy every single time. So here's our environment. We can also make it maybe a little bit smaller so you can see everything. And then the layers are changing, right? The classifier. So if you look at the classifier right now, it's set to wall, the screen, and also I can also point it to my plan. Also on the right hand side, you can see all the different objects that are getting created, including the OVR scene anchor. In this case, this one is the actual spawnable plane. We can also look at some of them that are volumes. So if we want to look in, into some of those generic prefabs, in this case, it's going to be a screen. So you can do all that with Oculus Link, which is really powerful, and I think it's going to save you a lot of time. So that's everything for this video, guys. If you guys enjoy this, let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to subscribe so that I can bring you a lot more videos like this. Thank you, guys.